Welcome to a world where nature's serenity meets the thrill of the chase. Prepare to embark on an extraordinary journey as we present to you our very first film. It's the end of the rainy season and Divan and myself decided to head down to the mighty Drakensberg, South Africa to see if we could target some of the most special fish in the world, rainbow trout. This is the first episode in a series called River Wild. My name is Andre and I have a passion for filmmaking and fishing. And joining me on the show is Divan Kutsia. Our anticipation is palpable as we prepare to cast our lines into these pristine waters. So, sit back and enjoy the ride. A little bit lower than I expected, but there's still some very nice fishable pools. We've had a good long walk in here, so I think we're going to start off here and fish our way back upstream. Uh, this is pretty much the boundary between reserve and tribal trust. So we protect it from the wind a bit. It's blowing when you're out of the gorge, so I'm going to fish it with a dry fly. And in the faster water, like the stuff behind us, I'll definitely do some euro nymphing to get down. It's a bit wishy-washy. But it's good for both. So, mostly rainbows and scaly on this stretch. Freestone River. Clarity is absolutely beautiful. It's late in the season, so there hasn't been much rain. Uh, so that's why the river is a bit, a bit low, but it's still, it's still fishable. Just gonna throw a big old stimulator. I think that's a size 10 hopper type pattern. Lots of um, grasshoppers still around this time of year. Well, we were walking down, saw one jump every now and then, so I'm quite happy to fish this. If they don't want this, I might scale down to like a little Adams or a LK Cat or something like that. It's a bit late in the day. But I'm so keen to catch one on dry, I'm going to give it a whack. Do a few pulls and then uh, if it's not going that great, might switch over to the check thing. It's a very solid pattern to pull back on. Our plan was simple. For every new pool that we come across, we start with a dry fly and follow that with some urolymphy. Trying to get a drag-free drift, very important. Keep an eye on your fly. Keep low, out of sight, water's very clean, so you stand out like a sore thumb. Just going to move up to the head of this pool. It looks great up there, water slightly deeper. So this fish was tucked up under that undercut. I just had to get close enough or get the fly close enough to it at least and he came up and smoked it. Absolutely no problems. First one of the day on the on the dry. Quite a good specimen. Net somewhere. But we'll manage him by hand. Jeez, he absolutely choked it. First fish of the trip. He ate a stimulator on the dry. It's always pleasant to get them on the dry. Beautiful wild spawned fish. White on the fins are indicative that they're wild spawned. That is just glorious. Absolutely stunning. On the dry as well. Cheers, buddy. There he goes. So happy now. Nice way to open the account. Well, technically I don't have a trout account as of yet, but seeing Divan catch a fish this early on on the dry gave me a glimpse of hope that I might be catching my very first trout on the dry very soon. Now they weren't buying the dry fly anymore. 
So I'm going to pull a nymph through here. It's always a good idea to follow up with a nymph because I'm sure for every one you get on dry, it's probably of about four or five that you can get on the nymph. So I'm sure they've seen the dry too many times. So I'm just going to chuck a, a purdy gone and a pheasant tail nymph flashback, matching bead size, three mil. Get it right up in that flow. So this in the back is typically dry fly water and the stuff up front, I really enjoy to put two heavy nymphs down there. So let's give that a quick whirl. And So I'm keeping contact with my flies throughout. I'm actually feeling them biting. I don't visually, visually see them eating it. It's gone. It's a better one. Oh, go. <laughs> oh, came away. Saw him flash on it. Saw a bigger one in there also. Got it. Quick and easy. So whenever they're refusing your dry or even your dry and dropper, the Technum really gets down to them right in the zone all the time. And they find it hard to leave it alone. Lovely. I'm sure there's one or two more. Once you get a few out of a pool, they tend to spook. But I'm sure there's one more. Well, there were definitely more fish lurking around, but they were simply not having it. After taking a couple of notes, I thought this might be a great opportunity to show Divan exactly what he needed to do to catch more and larger fish. Betting Andre that he gets a fish on the first drift. Bar, it's not a shocker of a cast. Ah, yes, there I was, catching the branch. Unfortunately, the first casts didn't go as planned, but I managed to land a nice yellow. Scaly, what's it? Playing scaly. Yeah. Big old boy. I remember that scaly being way bigger than it actually was. But like a young boy, I was still very excited that I caught my first fish. With that, we decided to back up and move upstream towards the next pool. We didn't want to break our strategy, so we started off with the dry fly first, but unfortunately, no luck. <laughs> Still see them flashing, but I can't see if they're trout or scaly. Oh, it's a scaly. It's <laughs> cool. It's on the tail scaly. This population is quite healthy. Get them all sizes from as big as your pinky to two and a half, three kilos. One of the native species. Get them back quickly. Cheers, little buddy. Off she goes. Let's get one more. I saw a slightly better one in there. 
see if we can get him to eat. Scaly enjoy these sandbars. There's obviously something that they're eating in there. I can see them flashing all over. The moment I get it down, they, they have a go at it. But whenever you get a bit of sand, be rest assured there'll be Scaly around. Scaly are happy to sit on the lighter colored bottom. Trout don't enjoy it at all. Caught him by accident. Another one. Okay, it seems this pool is just full of little undersized scales, so we'll move on. Personally, I don't like to define fish by size. I just like to call them by their name, scaly. Maybe it is because mine was a slight bit smaller than his. A fish is a fish. So we came across a pool that had a lot more depth and it didn't get direct sunlight like the rest of the river did during that part of the season which meant that naturally the water might be a little bit colder and the fish might be a little bit deeper streamers are often a good idea if you get deep dark pools like this typically the biggest fish on any stretch will gravitate towards the deepest pool and uh, they don't come big by eating silly little dry flies just keeping an eye on the tip of my fly line because this the shade has me has me blind. I can't see anything that's going on below me in the shadows. I'm just letting that willy bugger drift down naturally and I'll give it a quick strip next to this rock. See if anyone's interested. pool is packed with fish but none of them will come up to eat the dry so we'll throw a nymph at them quick they can't refuse it there we go quick and easy fight so well this time of year the water cools slightly and it gives them a bit more life come on buddy in you go in you go go ahead. they're very prolific in these bigger pools because there's nothing else for them to sit in so they tend to gravitate towards these areas Lovely, healthy little, little rainbow. Generally, I try and stay low. It helps. Like I said, the water is absolutely crystal clear. So if you can conceal yourself behind anything, a rock, a piece of brush, a stump. There we go. As soon as you get it in that right zone, so what you're looking for is the is the seams in between the faster and the slower water this is a little scaly it's amazing that you can get brown scaly and right and rainbow in the same run pint size scaly Does the size of the fish really matter? I guess it does. After Divan had all his fun, he moved back across the river and gave me another crack at getting some fish online. And boy, oh boy, did I catch some scalies.
being out here in the wild, in the outdoors, breathing in the fresh air, standing with your feet in the river, nothing beats that feeling. There's really something extraordinary that happens to a man's soul in these moments. Yes, the fish aren't large, but the experience is so tangible, so memorable, so free. Standing in that gorge and just being present. There is little that beats a feeling like that. And both Divan and I know what a privilege it is to have opportunities like these where we can fish the most remote areas and catch the most incredible fish. We most definitely do count ourselves very lucky. Apart from the many fish or the size fish that we catch, this is pretty much what it's all about. Getting out there, catching your breath, forgetting about the hustle and bustle that goes on every single day. This is what it's all about. Try not to get it too far out on the first go. Fish are often holding right up front. If you chuck it out in the back and hook one there, you're spoiling everything that's, well, that you could have fished that will now be unf unfishable. So at least put one or two short before you start making your way up. The day has gone full circle. Divan managed to land one more trout on the drive fly just before we started to head home. safe to say by this time we were tired and we were hungry and what better way to end off the day with a good old South African bride reminiscing about the day thinking about what we could have done what we would have done and what we should have done join us for our next episode in this series called River Wild who knows I might be catching my very first trout on a dry fly